This is a one meter fixture for the pedal modular lighting rig. It's simple, bright, and easy to transport. But it's a bit short, isn't it? So for something a little more impressive and stage ready, this two meter fixture is ideal. But all of a sudden shipping and transportation becomes far more inconvenient. Can we get the house lights on? Awesome. So to get the best of both worlds, I set out to design a way for this two meter fixture to break apart into two smaller halves. And while this might seem like a simple matter of just sticking two of these one meter tubes together, achieving a near seamless connection between the tubes while also adhering to a set of five predetermined manufacturing guidelines that we felt were necessary for a viable product, this ended up being quite the engineering challenge. See, just under a year ago, I released a video about the pedal modular lighting rig, and in that video I teased a fixture called the stacker, which achieved a relatively convincing seamless connection between different segments of tubing. But this was always going to be just a proof of concept, and was nowhere near ready for production. For starters, it used these cheap fluorescent tube guards from the hardware store, which can give you a pretty decent looking fixture, but if we were going to be selling these as a final product, the quality of these tube guards just wasn't going to cut it. So the pedal team and I came up with five manufacturing guidelines that we would need to meet in order to help ensure the success of what would be our first official fixture for the pedal lighting rig. With the first of these five guidelines, of course, being focused on quality. We knew we were going to need to replace the tube guards with something more rigid and ideally pre-coated in some sort of diffusion. Luckily, this kind of thing is relatively available, though cost can certainly be a deterrent, especially when compared to the fluorescent tube guards. But after some thorough searching, we found a source that had these really nice tubes with a decently wide beam angle and a nice milky white coating. And most importantly, it had this great aluminum channel for attaching the LEDs, but it also had this slot along the back, which would allow me to design parts that can bolt right onto the fixture. The cost of these tubes are reasonable compared to the tube guards, especially considering the aluminum channel replaces the old aluminum channel that I was originally just bolting inside of them. In fact, one of the most expensive aspects of these new tubes is the shipping, but I'll talk more about that later. These new tubes have an additional benefit that improves the quality of the final product as well. Since the white diffuser part simply slides onto the aluminum channel, we can use this property to create a more consistent joint between the two tubes. With the proof of concept version, I just 3D printed these little blocks that had threads which would allow you to line the tubes up and thumbscrew them together using the internal aluminum channel. But because this aluminum channel was so small and only attached to the tube at the very back, I often had to carefully align the tubes after assembly as there was still a lot of play there. My partner Andrew had the bright idea to offset the diffusion of the new tube so that the aluminum channel would do this alignment for you. This was the perfect solution for one of my biggest concerns with this design. So with the new tubes acquired, all we had to do was stick some LEDs inside, wire it up, and we'd be good to go, right? Well, this brings me to our second and third manufacturing guidelines, reducing manual labor and using off the shelf parts. A huge goal of the pedal project is to reduce costs to as low as possible, and one thing we've absolutely discovered is that time is money. With any electronic product, even one as simple as this, manual labor like soldering, alignment, and assembly can end up really adding up in terms of labor costs. Soldering one LED strip isn't that hard, but for this design we theoretically need to make three LED strip solder connections per fixture, and with three individual solder points per LED strip, and eight fixtures per rig, that would mean 72 soldering operations per pack of fixtures. And I enjoy soldering, but this would be daunting on a regular basis even for me. Now the BTF LED strips we purchase always come with wires pre-soldered on each end, and as it turns out, they offer strips in one meter lengths that also have these pre-soldered wires. Of course, this does increase the cost a little bit when compared to getting strips in the five meter roll, but it's still far cheaper than what it would cost if we factored in the time to solder them ourselves. Going this route also means we can avoid the risk of having to discard imperfect strips due to our own soldering mistakes, and ultimately means we can get orders out the door far quicker. Awesome except for one thing. Looking at my proof of concept again, we can see I had to do something a bit unusual. In order to get that perfectly seamless look, I needed to solder the wires to the LED strips backwards because if I did it the regular way, the wires would force a small gap between the LEDs, which ends up ruining the seamless look completely. 
Now these pre-soldered strips wouldn't work in this scenario, so I had to come up with a solution. And it occurred to me that I could take advantage of the flexible property of these LEDs by simply designing a little bracket that would support and bend the ends of the LEDs out towards the back of the tubes, allowing the faces of each LED to touch. This was the first real design consideration I made that ended up influencing the rest of the parts that would make up the entire connection mechanism for the fixture. The other big benefit to doing this is that the wires from the LED strips are now positioned outside of the tube, which brings me to the fourth manufacturing guideline we wanted to achieve, kitability. As many of you know, Pedal is determined to keep all our designs open source so that you can take on as much of the manufacturing yourself. We wanted to make sure that there weren't going to be too many manual manufacturing steps aside from printing and general assembly. So again, looking at my proof of concept version, I had to drill some small holes in the back of the tube to allow the wires to exit. We really didn't like the idea of people having to permanently modify these new tubes, especially considering we had another big plan regarding the kitability of this fixture. Remember how I mentioned that the shipping was one of the most expensive parts of these tubes? Well, we realized in our meetings that it really wouldn't be very cost effective to order these tubes to our shop, only to double the already high shipping costs by having to then ship them to you. So we wanted to make kits available where we could send you a small box of all the parts we make in house while allowing us to ship the tubes directly to you from the manufacturer. There are still some details we are working out here and the shipping from these manufacturers aren't exactly the quickest, but we think this is a really good option for people that want to reduce the cost even further and by designing the connector mechanism in a way that doesn't require drilling any holes in the tubes, we can make this option much more attractive to people who don't feel very confident with these more invasive manufacturing steps. So with four out of five manufacturing guidelines figured out, we had one more to tackle, user experience. We wanted to make every aspect of these fixtures as easy as possible to use, repair, modify, and build. This meant designing a brand new fully 3D printed socket plug with much better access to the wires than the PVC plugs we've been using up to this point. Of course, this also removes the manual drilling steps that were required to make the PVC plugs. The connector, which went through many, many design iterations, uses a sliding mechanism to easily join the tubes with no tools required. The thumb screws don't ever need to be removed either, unlike my proof of concept version, so you don't risk losing them and you don't need to fumble around on a dark stage to find the threaded holes. Every individual component of these fixtures can be accessed using a screwdriver, so if you ever need to replace a damaged part or if you want to add your own modifications, this can all be done without having to deal with any permanent joints. And of course, the smaller form factor means you can put these fixtures in a pretty standard long hard case for worry-free transportation between shows or even on flights. So if it wasn't obvious at the beginning of this video, this two meter fixture is in fact the first working prototype of the new official stacker fixture, which at the time of releasing this video is available for order on our new and improved website, pedalighting.com in the fully built configuration. The kits will also be available. However, as of right now, we will just provide a link to the order page for the tubes we are using for you to order yourself until we can figure out a one-click solution to do this all in one go directly from our website. We also have all the parts and 3D print files available on our website as well if you want to start building these on your own right away. Now my goal for 2025 is to release more videos about the pedal rig on this channel as well as some other non-pedal related videos, but hopefully you'll be seeing more videos more frequently from me moving forward. I've got one coming for those of you that have been struggling with the programming side of things that I think is really going to help, so keep an eye out for that. And if you want to get in touch, come join the Super Valid Designs and Pedal Discord channels in the description below. Until then, Happy New Year, and I'll see you in the next video.